Now, everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Oh, my God. Why are they screaming? They're not screaming. They're celebrating. They're coming back. What goes up must come down. Shouldn't we be nervous? Um, yeah. They like to get the landmarks. Ah, welcome to Everything Old is New Again. This is Douglas Viviani with the ever broad-minded David Cohen. And we're here to talk about, uh, well, that was a, a clip from where? Do you recognize that? That was from a movie, right? Oh, it was from a movie. I got uh, that part right. Uh, <laughs> and it was a movie that was a successful, popular movie. And hang on one second. It was also a movie that was out this summer. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody. Data was in it from Brent Spiner from Star Trek. All right. Independence Day 2. They're back. Yes. The summer alien invasion has begun with Independence Day 2. Just when you thought it was safe to enjoy summer evenings, Hollywood has burdened us yet again with another alien Bur invasion. Burdened in us. Independence Day 2. This oh, week, I gotta go see another movie. Uh, oh, I gotta come fight on. another alien attack. What a burden. Uh, this week and next, we're gonna take a look at the treatment of the UFO phenomenon and the many ways which we've been invaded in the past and what is our best offense to these aliens presented by Hollywood in these movies. Oh, good. So we're not talking about Independence Day 2. We're, we're talking more broadly about aliens. Is that it? We're going to do both. But yes, the introduction to this is definitely Independence Day 2 or Independence Day in general. Because, listen, I get uh, hopped up here with, uh, with Independence Day 1. Do you remember that movie? The first yes. One? And that came out. Check this out. This is what everybody got crazy about. They loved it. We're fighting for our right to live. To exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night, we will not vanish without a fight, we're going to live on, we're going to survive. I love that. Like, it doesn't it sound like like they it's, they actually took it so seriously that that sounds like George Washington would sound back in the day. No, or Donald Trump. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. but they turned the echo effects on. Did you hear that right in the middle yeah. and the sweeping music? I I'd love to say I remember the quote, but I think I left the movie before that <laughs> speech. So, which means you weren't really a big fan, I guess. Well, uh, I thought it was, it was okay. tremendous. I love the way they interwove in the theories that we've heard all the years of Area 51 and uh, that they've kept an alien, you know, at that facility. Right. And that, that character, again, that was Data, which was uh, Brent Spiner. I love that that kooky, crazy scientist that's lived there forever, um, that they would have kept it under wraps. Why would they have kept it? They just took it so, I'm going to say, seriously with tongue in cheek, which I just thought they got the right balance of this topic to kind of just have fun with it. And by the way, maybe it happened, probably didn't, but... But it raised questions, it, right? It, and if it, yeah, exactly. And it raised questions um, based upon some real, uh, you know, live people that actually, like, legitimate people that think uh, that it's possible that aliens have visited this planet, such as... You, Dan, you're me, one of them, yes. yeah. Um, I, I have, didn't discuss with Bruce that, but, uh, <laughs> but they were definitely, uh, well, there was one, uh, well, two specifically were definite aerial constructs uh, of some kind with, with uh, one of them with a light and, and one of them dull uh, gray, and they were, they were structures, and, and one of them going very slow, one of them hovering over me, and then there were the two that, uh, that my wife and friends and I saw a high-altitude sighting many years ago in Martha's Vineyard. Oh, yeah, no, I, I I believe uh, I believe that uh, that like like uh, Lord uh, you know the Lord Hill Norton said that there's probably many species coming and going. There's uh, Dan Aykroyd. I mean, we we know Dan. Dan Aykroyd begging for attention. Where has he been? Right. <laughs> so he's got to talk about. Well, he's, he's got to like, get back on the map and tell tell people he believes in UFOs. Oh, Dan, I remember Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Wow. What a nut he's become. And then he's selling that wine. He's got. I mean, that that vodka. You ever see the vodka in the shape of a? <laughs> no. You ever seen this? Oh, he, he sells this vodka. And it's in the shape of a skull. Like, um, remember that movie, the the last Indi Indiana Jones movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Crystal Skull. He's right. got Crystal Skull vodka that he's selling. Wow. And he also, uh, he, was, he was at the most recent 
uh, Ghostbusters yes. uh, premiere. That's right. And I think he's supposed to be making an appearance. I made an appearance. I know Bill Murray did or in, in Ghostbusters and the newest version. And um, he was down the road. We're in broadcasting out of Long Island, and he's down in the road in Huntington as uh, the Blues Brothers appeared again this summer, and they did two summers ago at a place called the Paramount Theater, a nice 2,000-person theater, and the Blues Brothers went crazy. They were tremendous. But anyway, I digress. Who's he doing? Who is the other blues brother? With uh, Jim Belushi. Jim, the brother. Okay. Yes. And it. so it was, re- I don't know, it was a lot of fun. I mean, he, I'm sure. Yeah. He, you're saying he's past his prime and he's talking about UFOs because he wants to get attention. That was my point. Because he's on coast to coast a, lot, a, a number of times <laughs> talking about this. But he was, well. he was in the in the Twilight Zone movie, right? Years ago in that opening he, scene. That was pretty, I remember, that was pretty scary. Yes. And, so. and with Albert Brooks. Yep. And he also, um, I mean, he's an interesting guy. He wrote Ghostbusters and his dad is very into ghosts he's not that much into the ghosts, although he had it as a background think about that growing up you know your dad's into ghosts and uh, all this is it's, it's, it's there they're talking about it at the dinner table or whatever right and then uh so he took that and made it into a movie what a great you know he's yeah. just a very interesting yeah. guy um supposedly has autism you know or as really? yeah that's what they say yeah he admitted hmm. that a, a little ways back so there's you know that's that's sort of a role model, if you will, for, for that uh, situation. And I think just he is really on top of so many topics. I, I don't know. He says he saw him UFOs. Okay, you shame me into, into making fun of him. <laughs> Fine. I take it back. There you go. And the next thing, well, we want to get him on as a guest at some point. I want that would to, be awesome. I would like him to fall far enough where he will <laughs> take off phone calls <laughs> and come on the show. No, but also, because we're a big fan, we have lots of quotes from him. We use it all the time. But he then says, like, if you really think it's real, and I, my, my brother also, the ufologist, Dr. John Viviani, has been on the show in the past, has also said that uh, uh, there's something going on there. Dan Aykroyd will now tell us why, if it's happening, the government never uh, would release that information to the general public. And that the Air Force is very interested. They don't deny the existence, but they, they can't come out and Perfect. say. Yeah. And you'd have complete breakdown in society. The Brookings Institution in 1958 said as much. There was a study, in that, and uh, they said, you can't divulge this. You can't make that this is real. So 50% believe, 50% don't believe. Well, he's basically saying that, uh, what, if you release that information, then all kind of religious leaders or political leaders would take a back seat to the UFO uh, culture, uh, whoever's here, and as a result, it'd be the breakdown of society because you say, you're not in charge of me, uh, whatever, U.S. government or whoever. Right. It's, right. it's something he, much huger than you and would cause uh, problems. So I, I wonder if, I mean, there's a theory, and I've presented this before. I'm not saying that I 100% believe it, but it's, cause I don't think about this 100% of the time. But when I think about it, it's possible that there's been a visitation. And if there was, let's go, just to go there, if there was, is Hollywood being used by uh, an agency of the government, listen to this now, I know you want to jump in on this, it's a great theory, to prepare the citizens, at least of the pla- of the U.S., but maybe of the planet, for the possibility that aliens exist, and therefore producing movies that show what would it be like, and that the aliens are like E.T. and magnanimous, and even if they were like uh, you know the aliens in uh, Independence Day, we still succeed over their technological problems and all that uh, or advantages. Uh, just throwing it out there. Yeah, I, I think you need to go back on that medication. <laughs> You're not. It's not working. I'm going to call George Nuri. You know who he is from. You, you're weaning yourself off too quickly. I think that's the problem. Yeah, they're going through Hollywood, right? Why wouldn't they? Yes, to, to, so, to prime people basically to get them ready for the inevitable news that hey, by the way, there are alien life forms. Exactly. Right. Okay. Say, yeah, I couldn't have said it better. So you believe me. You're, you reinforce well, I was just reiterating your fanatical rantings. Because so. we only have about 30 seconds left till we hit a commercial break and come <laughs> back. Is that why? Because it is a big topic. I, I just love it. We're going to dive in when we come back. Why wouldn't the aliens come? Like, why, you, you think they're communicating with Hollywood? Saying, well, hey, because they don't the want way, this guys. panic to so, happen. So the... We'll be back. Everything all is new again. This is Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. What's up? 
Welcome back to Everything Old is New again. This is Douglas Viviani and David Cohen talking about and visiting with you about the UFO invasion as per Hollywood. So we're going to in, enjoy the suspension of disbelief and say that, you know what? So that's belief. I, belief. Disbelief. And <laughs> suspend the disbelief. You mean, right. okay. So, yeah. Or suspend the belief. Depends what perspective you're on. But the idea <laughs> is we want to say, listen, if... It was to happen. What's happening with Hollywood? How did Hollywood present the different various ways? And, of course, literature. Uh, you know, how was it presented that aliens would come to Earth? And right. Would it be friendly? Would it be non-friendly or unfriendly? Right. right. And, and uh, that was War of the Worlds done by uh, in the radio, on, on the radio in 1934, I think it was, with H.G. Wells, who was, uh, created this. That was his original work. And Orson Wells and his radio uh, performance of... The War of the World. We've talked about that before. It's a seminal piece of work for uh, for the radio, where people took it seriously. But the point is, um, how, how are we dealing with this? Would they come by force? Uh, I, I guess it's it's possible. We heard that with the War of the World. Let's hear a little bit more. Um, of, now they then took that War of the Worlds in Hollywood in 1953, made a great movie about it. They also did one with. Uh, I guess it was two or three years ago. With no, but it's a long ago, longer ago now, right? I uh, think so. Yeah. About, I don't know. Two thousand five, I think it was with um, with uh, Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise, which was kind of not so good. I don't think this one's the uh, the the great one. If you want to go see War of the Worlds, this could be the beginning of the end for the human race. For what men first thought were meteors or the often ridiculed flying saucers are in reality the flaming vanguard of the invasion from Mars. How about that? How's that sound? The flaming vanguard. Yes, they went. They went. That sounds like a little bit like our friend from the newsreel. Um, really, what, Branford. Branford. Yeah, he's uh, he, he's around. Uh, he's, he's around here somewhere. Maybe he could kind of give us a war of the worlds or one of these. Uh, I think he's an alien. Maybe maybe they're here through. Brantford. Interesting. Well, that's another... We have to talk about that because there's a surreptitious way that aliens would come. And we'll do that next section. But there's War of the Worlds. These, these things came... They're coming head on. They came right. head on with this, their their tanks, so to speak, of, of you know... Uh, mass destruction. Mass destruction. They were their, air, their spaceships and they built these walking tripods that came and, and, you know, really just hit us head on. Or you can have something like this. The alien itself doesn't need any kind of mechanism or anything, the alien itself is something that is to be afraid of. Forget machinations, forget technology, forget anything but the blob. Every one of you watching this screen, look out, because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. Two teenagers see it first, like a falling star from outer space. How can it be stopped before long the nation and then the world could fall before the blood-curdling threat of the pop? Starring Steve McQueen and a cast of exciting young people. How about that? The first part sounded like Bradford, and the second part sounded like you. Starring Steve McQueen and some other people. It was almost like they went to the studio, and Bradford did his job. They took it really seriously, and they said, wait a minute, we forgot yeah, He went home. Say. Right, wait. He went home. we got to get the guy get from... Get the guy back. Oh, he can't do it. He's doing some radio show. He can't do it this week. All right, get the other guy to come in here and add in Steve McQueen. And it's very important. We've got to say, there's a lot of exciting young people in this movie. N nameless, right? <laughs> I mean, what was that about? <laughs> Starring Steve McQueen and some nameless young youth. <laughs> Wearing bikinis and uh, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like what? Would, I gotta go see a movie with those young people in it. Like, yes, what the Steve heck? McQueen is not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. Now that was Steve McQueen's first uh, movie. Yeah, think about you know he's a very well respected later on. He yes, Great Escape and all kind of movies and uh, and and he did the Blob and and I showed that to my seven and four year old. About a year ago, your seventy four year old, my seven and four. Oh, I see. Okay, and they and they still talk about the blob to this day and are terrified of the blob. It's well, it's weird because when you see it now, the kind of color that they use for that movie, it, it's like that nineteen fifty ish kind of color movie. I can't describe it. You have to dull see it. Dull color, kind of dull. Yeah, which I don't know for some reason makes this blob even scarier in that color. Yeah, I don't know why it and, just does. And, and and did you see like uh, you you you've got that mention of. Everyone in this theater should be afraid because the blob's coming in. And, and in the theater, in the movie, there's 
a section where they're in the movie theater yeah. and the blobs coming, and the blobs into, coming into, into the movie, the movie theater. <laughs> it was that it's could so be memorable. frightening to to small children. You know what I had to do? Uh, Angelica was really my seven year old was really having trouble sleeping because of the blob. Because uh, I get into trouble for this. I was just trying to show a nice goofy movie. I thought it was kind of goofy and fun, and it hit home. And she thought the blob was going to come in through her uh, door, right under the door. So I had to line up all of her beanie babies on the uh. floor to defend against the blob. And, in fact, if they lost the battle, at least she would be able to see and hear them battling, and she can call me, and I would did, save her. Did she feel better? <laughs> she did. She, she went did. right to sleep. Oh, that would, that's worked. <laughs> wow. So there's a force of... If there's a defense that we need against the blob, Beanie Babies is the way to go. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? Uh, but that, you know, the alien itself could be something that would be frightening, right. as uh, the blob is, and as is, if you remember this one, the thing... Thousands of years ago, it crashes and this thing gets thrown out. You see, what we're talking about here is an organism that imitates other life forms. Every little piece is an individual animal with a built-in desire to take its own life. So how do we know who's human? Now, that's uh, Kurt Russell. Remember this movie, 1982? Mm -hmm. With John Carpenter. He's gone away. I don't know where he is. He created Halloween, the original, yeah. and he did the Thing remake in 82. There was an original the thing in the 50s with James Arness as the monster. This was, to me, ran a chill up my spine when I first saw it. Did you remember seeing this? I do, yeah. And it could, it's sort of like Invasion of Body Snatchers, but it, 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 the thing itself can be anything, anyone. And then when you're alone with it, it, it basically kills you and yeah. takes over. Um, yeah, because it sort of plays into what I think we would think now, the, the form they would take. Right. Yeah, they, they don't have to be you know green aliens. They they're coming on straight force, you know, straight ahead, coming on and and attacking and all that. And even when you knew it was going to happen, you didn't know where it was going to come from. So it's really frightening. It could, could an alien could be you right now. You know? Me? Yeah. It, it just I don't know how it would know all of the trivia. That we should know, like but. we should make a signal to each other. Like if you feel an alien taking over your body, there should be some visual signal. You know, to let the other person know that they're being possessed by an alien. So, should, yes. like a wink or so, should it be uh, that? I think what we would do, I think they would probably, hmm, they probably would get my interpretation wrong. Just look at the back of my head and look at Lee, what Leo says is my circle. Where the hair is not there, and so <laughs> the if bald they, spot. If they, yeah, if they, <laughs> if they don't get that right, or if you see hair there, that's the imitation of me that's not true. Oh, so as, as opposed to actually inhabiting your existing body. Yes, exactly. Uh, because the thing creates its own body. Doesn't That's true. That's so, true. We'll have to talk but about what that. if it took over you, your body right now? Well, How then, would I know? Um, That's what I'm saying. Can you make some sort of, let's make a pact that one of us will signal to the other that they're being invaded internally by an, uh, by an alien. Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll eat something healthy, uh, and that'll, <laughs> that'll show you that we're in trouble. How about clip number the 11, Signs? we're about to show you was taken yesterday afternoon at his son's seventh birthday. Remember that scene in Signs? That was Signs. I'm going to go really quick here um, with Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phillips in 2002 where they've got a real report of a party and someone saw an alien in the background and they came on full force. Those aliens attacked like crazy. And I just thought that was a great scene. And the hearing that, that fear in all the kids and, and, and then, of course, Joaquin's watching this on TV, his fear. Well, that was what it really would be like yeah. if you saw an alien come to Earth. When are your kids going to watch that one? <laughs> Uh, next week, I've got that lined up for Saturday afternoon. That Get the Beanie Babies ready. <laughs> I mean, but that's that's how it would be. I think science yeah. is kind of realistic. That's you know they'd be squawking around and and you know taking out the scene first, and then they'd come and attack. Just Pounce. Like, yeah, just like the uh, alien did. And listen to this: in space, where no one can hear you scream. On everything old is new again. We're right back. Now, back to America's entertainment pop culture talk show, Everything Old is New Again, with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. He saw them land from outer space. He saw them capture innocent people only to destroy. Trusted police turned into arsonists. The boys' parents changed into killers. Invaders from Mars. 
capturing humans at will for their own sinister purposes. Oh, how about that? Invaders from Mars, the 1953 movie that was my blob, and you're listening to Everything Old is New again with Douglas Viviani and David Conan. Did you ever, first of all, ever see the Invaders from Mars? I did not. Real, real, real low-budget movie. I saw that with my dad and my brother, maybe I'm going to say, you know, on a Saturday night at like 10 o'clock. How old were you? And I was probably about eight or nine. And it's a story of a kid, a little kid about that age, and he sees in the backyard a flying saucer or it looks like a meteor land. He goes and investigates, and through the, the movie, basically what's happening, aliens come and take people, the existing body of people, they just take them over. And there's a little pin in the back of their neck that you could see kind of sticking out that if they have that, they're an alien or been influenced by aliens. And the, everyone you know or he knows becomes evil, and he goes goes to the police and they turn and finally goes to the a general in the army and the army knows about it and, and the and the aliens are are in under sand like it's a quicksand to get to where they are they're underground anyway and uh it's horrifying horrifying <laughs> for a child how, at nine years old how, you know. how did it end and it ends where he wakes up in bed and realizes it was all a dream, a dream. but then he looks out the window and sees the beginning scene, first scene of the movie where he sees the meteor landing. It was a so, premonition. Yes. Okay. So that even made it more horrifying because it wasn't just a dream. Right. It's a dream that's going to happen. Um, but it was a bad movie? It just, just the way it was made? Horrible movie. Because it's such a good premise, you know. <laughs> It's weird. And, and that's like how, it's kind of like the show. It's a great premise, but right. it just the execution is the other issue. Uh, <laughs> it was it was really I don't know. That was my blob. I could not sleep for a long time thinking about the aliens taking over people. And that's the second aspect we talked about. First, we talked about Hollywood's presentation of you know aliens. For, presenting themselves by for, forceful nature upon humanity. Now the question is, wouldn't they really come and try to be, if they had some goal, try to be subtitious and, and not uh, cause, like we said, uh, all this... Mass hysteria. Un, like, and, Dan right. Aykroyd references, you know. Um, so that also is kind of the same theme, in a way, as Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And they did an original Invasion of the Body Snatchers with Kevin McCarthy in the 50s, which was tremendous. We'll hear a quote from that in the, in later on. But I want to throw in a Star Trek reference have you ever seen the remake of invasion of the body snatchers from 1978 no listen to this we came here from a dying world we drift through the universe from planet to planet pushed on by the solar winds we adapt we survive function of life is survival <laughs> There you go. There was uh, a, what was happening during a, that. First of all, a, a voice that I want to see if you recognize first. Leonard Nimoy. Yes, Leonard Nimoy, and that was his first movie, real movie. That after it's like ten years, ten years after Star Trek, and I went to go see this and thought he was going to be the hero of the movie. He turned out to be a villain in the movie. Uh. In the middle of the movie, he is someone that is the alien that they kind of from pods when you're asleep, they take over your body and kill you as a person, and then the alien is you and they're going to do that and these pods are going to like seeds are going to multiply through the uh world and eventually they'll take over the world that way um at the end was the death of the character that nimoy was playing because he's describing this and the humans are like disgusted a couple of humans and there was uh, uh donald sutherland was the uh the hero and he was he had dis was disgusted so he snuck up behind Mr. Spock, if you will, and uh, and stabbed him with the scissors and killed him. That Ooh. was the end of it. <laughs> but the movie is great. I mean, it's a really good remake. If you want to see a color version of the Invasion of the Body Snatchers, you had to have heard of it. I think even to yeah. this day, it's so iconic, that movie. I'm surprised. Have they made a remake since 1978? I think they did, and it was horrible. horrible. Yeah. Uh, this was a really good one, really good okay. remake. Uh, so it is horrifying when there's this undercurrent of... The aliens coming, and you don't know. Again, the second one, if it is from Mars, invasion of the body snatchers, you don't know that, just like the thing, you don't know that they're the alien till it's too late. And good. So, so far, I haven't seen you eat anything healthy, so I know you're still okay. Exactly. Now, there was another movie uh, that I thought, I bet you no one has seen this one, that I think is really good on the same topic called The Arrival. Stop watching the skies. I know why they're here. Start watching Look Back. Charlie Sheen, Ron Silver, The Arrival. Like I said, see, you didn't know the half of it. Kind of, again, the same thing. Aliens are taking the place of humans, and this 
soul individuals trying to call attention to it before the humans become the minority of life force on the planet. And uh, that guy, Ron Silva, if you ever, he's an old mm-hmm. actor from the day. He, he plays a menacing son of a gun. Do you have any movies in the, from the last 40 years that we, we can talk don't. about? No, they don't. They're not doing these movies anymore. You tell me. Have you seen any? The I'll show, We'll show that next week. Talk about the more current movies I and how they're, they're, they're changing. You'll, this is, goes all along my theory. We're, we're being indoctrinated to learn about aliens, that it's possible that they're you know, there would be forceful. Oh, that's part of the somebody. Hollywood process exactly. of, of getting us ready. Correct. And next and week will be the on more for modern. 50, 60 years now. Correct. Exactly. I this, think yes. if, if aliens really wanted to invade, why would they be invading? They, wanna, they want the Earth for some reason for their own, right? Wouldn't they be of such a high intellectual level that we wouldn't feel it? We would all just die at the same instant, right? How? How would they do that? I, I don't know. I mean, but it's, it's like, not, what is it, two and a half billion people on the planet? How many people on the planet? Billions, if billions. If you're smart enough to come here and, and to be able to take over our planet, there's got to be a way where I don't know what they would sprinkle on us or something. Where It, it would be simultaneous death across Never happened. the globe. Listen, if you have uh, like ant infestation in your house or your apartment, <laughs> I mean, there's billions of these ants. You cannot get every last <laughs> one of them. I, we have a sliding glass door. In the backyard, and we, you know, to the backyard, and we've got the and the traps. We have the people coming. They lay this uh, goop, and they're going to step on the goop and go back to the nest, and it kills all the. It, they come back every year. There's no such thing as killing all of a huge number of beings like that. You've got to do it you systematically. Know. As far as you know, and I know all. <laughs> We gotta be. We gotta be worried about goop. We shouldn't be eating big globs. Yeah, don't be of goop stepping or... on any goop because that All would right. be like like the aliens coming laying goop down ah. for us to go back to the house and have problems. I'll be uh, on the lookout for that. <laughs> and then there was the day the Earth stood still. They remade this that? with Keanu oh, Reeves. A movie, yeah. absolutely horrible. Uh, in the fifties, this was a craze. Now think about the social message here. Just listen to what they're talking. There about. There must be security for all, or no one is secure. Now, this does not mean giving up any freedom. For our policemen, we created a race of robots. In matters of aggression, we have given them absolute power over us. The result is, we live in peace. Your choice is simple. Join us and live in peace, or pursue your present course and face obliteration. So there the aliens are actually coming out and saying, listen guys, a human race... We're going to leave these robots here, and you're going to join us, and you're going to allow them to make to be the judge, jury, and executioner for anyone that is, uh, you know, how do you define this? Anyone that's aggressive, let's say, and uh, or commits a crime, let's say, and as a result, you're going to have total freedom on this planet, but you, but you're giving up the job of security on the planet. Now, would you, not to get political, because it, it really is, a, and that was a political message in the 50s, and it still works to this day. Would you give up base, some portion of freedom to say, well, that's okay, I'm going to give all this up and, and due process and all that, I'm going to give it all up to these perfect robots who are going to judge all of us when it comes to this particular issue, so we never have to worry about being robbed or any you know, kind of issue in the future. Do they serve you food? Like if <laughs> the I robots, yeah. Well, they, Will they these, take care of me in that way. They do have these robots on. Like I don't know if you've seen the uh, the, the Royal Caribbean. They've had they have a robot that actually mixes drinks for you. Oh, check that out on YouTube. Yeah, no, I think if they're waiting on me hand and foot, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to be afraid of anything anymore. Yeah. All right, sure. I mean, that, bring it on, baby. That's where we're at. Uh, yeah, they're coming. The uh, aliens are coming. Oh, it's been this confirmed. Character. I didn't know that. So we will be back and everything old is new again. This is Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. The Martians had no resistance to the bacteria in our atmosphere to which we have long since become immune. After all that men could do had failed, the Martians were destroyed and humanity was saved by the littlest thing. God in his wisdom had Welcome back to Everything Old is New Again. It's a little abbreviated clip from the ending of the War of the Worlds 1953 version. And we're talking about uh, suspending our disbelief and if suspending aliens Suspending our came. belief. Suspending our belief, not our disbelief. <laughs> well, you are, you have, I want you to suspend your disbelief that there are no aliens. That's what I'm saying. 
Okay. So, the, so that you're suspending that. You're putting it aside. Say, okay, it's possible there are aliens, and they possibly uh, visited. Uh, okay. Sorry, to, sorry, I threw us off. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, okay. go. Sorry. Yeah. So, well, that's okay. I mean, that's what it's about. We're we're talking about um, what would we do, or what what's the best defense? You're to right. Aliens. Yeah, suspend your disbelief. Yeah. There I go again, veering off. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Bradford when you need him? Uh, <laughs> speaking of suspending anything, we'll suspend the show for a moment and look at and be happy with the presentation of this show on WRMZ 98.1 The Ram in Headland, Alabama. We've just added that to our affiliate network. Very happy to be on that non-for-profit station uh, that was uh, became uh, in existence only recently, right. August About 29th, 2014. 14, right? Yeah. Amazing, right? We've got uh, two individuals on that uh, uh, or that run that station that are doing a great job, right? Yeah, Gene Sigler, the, the GM. Uh, is one of them, and we're we're real happy to to be uh, a presence on their station, there you do, go. doing good for for that part of Alabama. Absolutely, we've also got Tom Smith, who is the president and been in in uh, radio for forty years, and he is uh, shares the mic with uh, with Gene uh, at lunch break with Big Tom. And Gene, weekdays at 11 to 1. So, uh, Big Tom O'Brien is uh, what his screen na- or on air name is. And <laughs> I'm going to tune into that on the internet and see what that's all about. But we're happy to be there. Yes. Thank you so much. And we're spreading just like the blob uh, has spread and did spread on the movies. And the question is how did they get rid of the blob? How did it ever end? Do you remember? No. What, didn't a little kid with a little gun, toy gun, come out and try to shoot it? He sure I did. I remember that. that it didn't work, though, did it? ineffective, yes. Yeah. This is what was effective. What are they going to do with that thing, Dave? Well, the Air Force is sending a Globemaster in. They're flying it to the Arctic. It's not dead, is it? No, it's not. Just frozen. I don't think it can be killed. But at least we've got it stopped. Yeah, as long as the Arctic stays cold. There you go. And, uh, we've got a uh, little touch there of the ending where uh, Mother Nature is our best defense against these aliens. That's sort of like a go-to cliche for a lot of these movies, right? W- w- whatever the evil is, you bring it up north and you freeze it freeze so it. It, it can't come back. Because that's right. what the thing was. The thing was frozen until they unfroze it and caused mm. all the problems. And this is what they did with the blob. They brought it to, and, and into the Antarctic as it, as it was frozen on the, the diner, if you remember, it was about ready to eat the diner. Right, right, right. And, uh, and also War of the Worlds. How did that end? Remember, War of the Worlds ended because the, the common cold or the viruses we have on the bacteria on the planet that we've become immune to, the aliens were not, and right. they died as a result of that. So again, Mother Nature... Um, went ahead and solved the problem for us. So that's an interesting aspect. We were talking about before about uh, the question of of if you were uh, an alien culture that had that much technology, what would you do? And you're saying that you think they would be able to just uh, destroy every human we wouldn't know, we wouldn't feel it. We wouldn't know it was coming. It would just be mass extinction, like simultaneously. But I think here's the thing. We talked about the ants before. My my response to that was about the ants. But my I want to go one step beyond. Is I think the technology to tra- travel so far from wherever they came from, the different other galaxies to come here, to have that technology and uh, would lend lend you to believe that they sort of would be as advanced as we were we are to ants. So now, if we came and visited an ant uh, colony right now, other than destroying it, and why would we want to destroy it unless they were paying the neck to us, you know? Um, why would you even bother? Like, what's the point of coming to Earth if you're so advanced technologically? Right, well, what, that's just the, to kill us? What would, no, right. Uh, the assumption know. is they need they would need our planet for something. And if they're so right. technologically advanced, why would they need our planet for something? Maybe they want to you know? grow better people. I mean, <laughs> they, they don't like us. They'd have to be carbon-based. They'd have yeah. to ha- want H2O. They might be living on something else. I mean, we're not, you know, that's the height of hubris to think that any living being would have to be similar to us. Maybe they want slaves, uh, and they want to grow a new breed of slaves. They don't think we're, we're good enough. But I don't think you would develop all that and technology. And what's wrong? Why aren't we good slaves, Doc? Why wouldn't we be good slaves? <laughs> well, I think... It ticks me off. Because we, we would, the human spirit would never, never give up. Up, uh, as in independence today, today is our up. independence we plant a virus into that mother ship it's going to then filter down into all the corresponding ships below we're, uh, we're going to uh, have to um, <clears throat> fly their alien craft out of our atmosphere and dock with it we, we then upload the virus and that'll disorient the smaller ships below and that could buy it i think at least some time to take them take them out take them down do your 
They're your stuff. So there we go. So we have it's some technology. Right? Isn't he great? Uh, I would <laughs> love to have him on the show. I mean, he's really Instead of me. Yeah. He, he'd have to fall really far uh, from grace at this point to <laughs> take our call. But I, I really would love this guy. He's so interesting the way he acts and performs. But that's it. That We, we try to use our technology against them and their own technology against the aliens. It's the only way we would, well, in, in that movie, we'd be able to overcome. Uh, the only question is, I think it's more than this. I think that they would come for a purpose and or our defense has is here, as we've seen with the War of the Worlds, the Blob, Independence Day. We have our defense here, basically Mother Nature or our use of an understanding of technology as best we can. Uh, let's just listen to the ending to, to Signs as a different perspective on, uh, on life here, even, as a result of these movies. People break down into two groups. When they experience something lucky, group number one sees it as more than luck, more than coincidence. They see it as a sign that there is someone up there watching out for them. Group number two sees it as just pure luck. They feel that whatever happens, they're on their own. And that fills them with fear. See, what you have to ask yourself is what kind of person are you? Are you the kind that sees signs, sees miracles? Or do you believe that people just get lucky? Or look at the question this way. Is it possible that there are no coincidences? Interesting. I don't know if that's too deep to get into at this point, but isn't that uh, he's he, just to catch up a little bit? He's just presenting to the the people in his uh, family after they've been invaded by aliens. Um, is there a reason for this? What's happening? Do we have uh, a champion in any way in divinity or within ourselves or within Mother Nature, whatever you want to phrase it, to be able to overcome these aliens that have come to try to, to get us? And I think it's, it's brilliant the way, I mean, I, M. Night Shyamalan's not done a gr lot of great things recently or since then, I don't think. But I th to me, this movie spoke to me in that, if you remember, right, they had a lot of different things happening. The girl left, um, the daughter left empty uh, or almost empty glasses of water around the house all over the place. The brother uh, used to be a baseball player and uh, used to hit home runs like crazy and kept the bat, bat around but was frustrated that he had to quit that because of uh, various problems in his life. And all those things came to light when the aliens came or one alien came to the house. They, you know, they said, he, Mel Gibson said, swing away to his brother who was a great baseball hitter and then used the bat to knock down this huge alien and then uh, kept on doing it and then the water fell from the glasses on the mantelpiece and the water was something that these aliens couldn't deal with that was like acid to them so the you know it would just does that make sense all of these coincidences really were not coincidences all your defense you've been listening to everything old is new again america's pop culture entertainment talk show find us on the web at everything old is new again dot biz that's dot biz see you next week same bad time, same bad station.